Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome once again to the latest and greatest episode of The Secrets of the High Demand Coach. And I'm here with yet another high demand coach, and, and that is the one and only Ken Kilday. And Ken is a former executive leader and a uh, current full-time executive business coach. He uses the diversity and depth of his leadership experience, which we're going to get to hear about, uh, to help CEOs, business owners, and executives to become better leaders, uh, to become better executives, and to become uh, better decision makers, deliver better results, and do that all both personally and professionally. Uh, he's also got an ebook out. I'm sure we'll get to talk about that a little bit later called The Six Silver Bullets You Need to Grow Your Business Fast. Uh, I'm excited to explore that a little bit further. But before we get there, Ken, welcome to the show. Uh, I'd love for you to just share a little bit of how you got into coaching and why. Thanks for having me, Scott. And the way that I got into coaching and the reason that I did it, uh, I'd had a corporate career, um, more than one industry, 20 years just in financial services. And I'd reached a stage where there were, there were aspects about my role and my work and the firm that I worked for that I absolutely loved. But yet there were other elements of it that were just a bit of a grind, and I'm sure people can relate. Um, not that entrepreneurship doesn't have its own segment of the grind, so to speak, but, but by and large, um, I accomplished a lot, worked with some great teams, and reached uh, an inflection point where the decision for me was either I um, get another challenge to tackle, maybe at a different firm, maybe at the one I was at, or take a step back. And it was in conversation with my husband that, he guided me through the introspection of, hey, what, what do I love about leading people? And the long story made short is I like the, the process of human development, of helping people tap into their own native genius, uh, unlocking their own leadership genius, as I like to call it, and using that for uh, their own progress and, and the efforts of their business or their division and so on. So. Mm. In my husband said, "Hey, you you can form a business around that. Yeah. People people will need your help. So that's what I did, and that's how I got into coaching. That's fantastic. So tell us a little bit then about what that coaching looks like. What's some of the uh, you'd say the most important work that you do with your clients? Some of the most important important work that I do with my clients is getting them to understand that that a lot of the way they were able to form a business, which means." Uh, they had a great idea, they worked their butts off, they were willing to, uh, to do more and for more hours than most people are willing to do. That's the sort of the formula for entrepreneurship. And that while that is important to get off the ground, um, getting into, you know, the, the jargon is scale, but, but building out a team and starting to delegate and recognizing that other people can do some of the things that we were doing ourselves better that's what helps people really grow. So it's getting all that stuff that's up here out on paper so that other people can help them do that. Um, I, I picture it as they cannot be the owner, the founder cannot be the one that tells the origin story forever. Mm. And they cannot be the one that, that uh, helps people understand what the core values are forever. That needs to be part of the common element. It needs to be uh, memorialized, if you will. <laughs> Somebody's got to write this right. down. Yeah, and um, then it has to work its way into the systems that help that business grow. Got it. Got it. When when do we cross that proverbial line, if you will, from like startup mode to uh, again what we would very loosely call scale mode? Yeah, I don't think it's a, a time period per se. I think it's a there's a moment where. Um, whatever our, our, right, if we're 10 hour a day or 12 hour a day people, whatever that quantity is, um, we work a certain pattern and it works and it works and we get a lot of results and then all of a sudden we stall and our effort is not less at all. Mm -hmm. Um, our enthusiasm isn't less, but it's starting to wane because we're not getting the results. That's the moment. That's when, you know, you've gone as far as you're going to get. Um, it's that a, the age old meme of what got you here won't get you there. You've gotten yeah. as far as you're getting with what you're doing and now it's time to adjust. Yeah. What would you say are some of the the beliefs? Because And I think you brought up a really interesting point, which is that these beliefs serve the entrepreneur well at some point in time, right? So we're not talking about just bad business. We're actually talking about really, really good business decisions 
that maybe aren't serving you well anymore. So what, what would you say are some of the top uh, places where that pattern shows up? Oh, for sure. It's going to come in. Um, it's going to come in aspects of communication. You know, um, they're the, the entrepreneurs getting busier and busier and they have that sense of, I I'm telling my people, I'm telling them, I'm telling them. Um, but it's not, it's not landing anymore because there's mm-hmm. too many of them, right? They've hit that stage. The, the second component is the delegate that, um, they used to do everything because they had to do everything. They were likely a single shingle when they started. Um, but they're having a hard time letting go. Like supposedly they've hired some people to help them, but they're not letting those people actually help, right? They're yeah. still hanging on to a lot of things. That aspect, if, if I let go for a second, something's going to fall apart. Right. And it's a, it's a funny paradox and tension, but that's how that shows up. Mm. Mm. So good. Uh, and uh, so someone's there and maybe they feel like they've stalled. Um, so sometimes that language can get a little slippery for me. Like what does stalled look like? Is it, did I have a bad day? You know, is it a bad week? Like <laughs> what are some of the things, maybe even a story or two that you have of like, Hey, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. Cause being an entrepreneur, there's bad days, right? There's bad weeks. There's even bad months that aren't necessarily existential. Uh, but then there are other times when it, it's a lot more than a bad day, week or month. But we, I think we have an, uh, we've been through so many bad days, weeks and months that we have an opportunity to incorrectly diagnose it as just another one of those. Uh, mm. So how do some of the challenges that you help folks overcome, how do they differentiate from kind of those momentary afflictions, if you will? Um, there's, there's at least a pattern. So it's not a one bad day. They have a moment of reflection where they realize to your point of this is not one bad day. This is now a bad quarter. It's actually a bad year. And it's, I have not grown, but I've never worked harder in my life. Okay. One of my clients, uh, they, they're a partnership. And uh, what they told me in retrospect, looking back at what's the difference in working together, one element that, that they picked out was they said, hey, you know, we, we communicate with each other so much better. I'm like, tell me, well, what was it like before? And they said, we could not sit in a room for a period of time and talk about our business, the one we founded, without screaming at each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that had not been their norm. That's not how they started the business. It got to that. And then they sat back one day and realized, this is not normal. I mean, it's not our normal. And um, that's, that's when they... I had run into them at a networking event and, and so on. And now right. yeah, we've been working together for three years, but that yeah. was how that showed up for them. Mm, fantastic. And, and I, there's something that jumped out for me there. And that is that w- we tend to talk about and think about problems as absolute, right? I've got a bad employee. Uh, I, mm. I've got a partner who's a pain in the butt, right? I, uh, we, we don't like working together as if it's kind of always that way and will always be that way. But I think what happens more often than not, you could have someone who's a bad employee in one position who's a great employee in another, or a bad employee in one you know, team or company who's a great employee in another. Uh, you can have two people who love working together, right? Godfather of each other's children, who end up one day in a screaming match and realize this is what we've done for the last three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so uh, I think you bring up a really good point, which uh, is helpful for folks to grab onto in that it's not just this is this is always wrong, or this is always right, or that that person's always bad or always good, but the timing can have such a profound impact on that over time, uh, and and that's fascinating. Uh, question that comes up though is, what do folks try to do before they bring in someone like yourself, with, and and how does that go? Um, you know, they what they try to do is they read all the current books, maybe some of the golden oldies. And they try to diagnose themselves. But I, I believe that in our profession, what we bring is objective perspective. And, um, you know, all the sports analogies really do work in that um, if you look at any, if any, the listener, whatever your favorite sport is, whomever the champion is in your sport, they have had one, if not multiple coaches to get there. And that's because somebody has observed them playing and can see, you know, in golf, 
a move your elbow an inch and that can be the difference between winning and losing mm. it's that subtle and in business coaching it's that as well as of we come in objectively and we're taking a look at and i think what people get just really awfully wrong is if you you business owner already feel that sense of overwhelm like i don't know how i work any harder <clears throat> doing more of that is not going to solve it right doing exactly what you're doing that mania is is not going to solve it and chances are um you're missing some of the clues that are in front of you because you're so busy reacting yeah. that's what i observe that's what i yeah. see yeah that's fantastic uh, and so much of what you're talking about aligns uh, so much with the different stages that we talk about with our audience. So that early struggle stage, and uh, it, it is, it's that entrepreneurial, like you got to figure out how to sell, you got to figure out how to get like the minimum viable thing out the door and, and go and go and go. And if you're still doing that as CEO, you know, five, 10, 20, <laughs> 50 employees later, we've got a really big problem on our hands. You can't mm -hmm. scale you, right? You can scale a business, but you can't scale you. And so I love the way that you you approach that. And and what I think a lot of folks miss uh, that that you know, I almost missed in, in your uh, answer, but you gave it was, we try and say, hey, what are the tactics? What are the five things that I need to be doing? And right out of the gate, you're saying, hey, it's not so much about the tactics and what you're doing, it's what are you thinking? What are you believing, right? And from that point, uh, what are you doing? So why do you think, um, why do you think even when confronted with it, right? The advice that you would give a client uh, or you know, listening to a podcast and saying, yeah, I recognize the pattern. Why is it so hard to change some of those behaviors and beliefs? Well, I think at least a core part of it is the the aspect that makes someone a successful entrepreneur, that grit, the tenacity, uh, the know-how, the work ethic. Um, and then suddenly they have to say to themselves, oh, I, I don't have it all figured out. It, it's almost a paradox, that confidence that made them a successful business owner in the first place is the same thing that's going to keep them from asking for some a little bit of additional help. Yeah. Um, it's sort of that, well, what are you going to tell me? Kind of, it's that moxie that made them successful will kind of hold them back from getting a little bit of external help. Mm. Got it. All right. So uh, we've been kind of leading up to this, and, and it's always my favorite part of the show. Uh, I've been looking forward to it in this conversation, and I know our audience as well because they know it's coming. But uh, I'd love to ask you, uh, what is the biggest secret that you'd want to share that you wish was not a secret? What's that one thing that you wish every listener, every entrepreneur, every business leader listening today knew or understood? Yeah, it's it's the reality that time is the great equalizer it's the one resource that absolutely everybody has the exact same quantity there nobody has more or less time and um, that's usually one of the first objections i hear is i just don't have any time i'm so busy i'm out of time i don't have time and yet we can find somebody in our profession or in a similar business that that just uses it better um, it's really not time so much as it's focus. So I, I wish people understood that um, if they can master that, it becomes a competitive advantage once they've done so. They master yeah. that one, the rest fall in line. Yeah. What would you say, baby step number one, right? For someone who's looking and saying, hey, I want to have more focus. I want to make better use of my time. What would be something that they could implement today? Oh, number one, carve out 30 minutes, an hour, if you can, if you can manage it psychologically, but carve out 30 minutes and shut absolutely everything off uh, and, and have a quiet conversation with yourself about your own business. In other words, get out of working in it and start working on it. If they can do that, think about a plan that they want to execute for the day, meaning what are they going to get done today? Plot it out plan it out, think about it, and then go do your day. It will change everything. Because a lot of very successful entrepreneurs, they've slowly gotten into a habit of, they are the, the help desk for absolutely everyone in their organization. Everybody comes to them for the answer because they have them. So it's the, we need to teach them to fish, not hand them the fish. And that starts with quiet time, number one. Fantastic. 
Oh, that's excellent, excellent advice. It, it's surprising to me, or at least it was surprising to me as I started bumping into it, how many high-level CEOs uh, and leaders have a, a ritual of sorts of talking to themselves, of coaching themselves, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of different frameworks and patterns for that. But that that moment to sit down and reflect and plan accordingly, I think is, yeah, it's excellent advice. Uh, another question that I have for you here, uh, I'm going to have you jump into the ring with us, take off your coaching consultant hat and put on your CEO hat and tell us a little bit about what growth looks like for you and your business in particular. Sure. Growth for me uh, next year in particular, as I set the groundwork this year, is to bring in a few more independent coaches, people like me that would love to leave corporate environment and do a little more of this hands-on work, which is what they've enjoyed in their own careers, much like my own, um, and helping them with a framework. In other words, they can come in and use the Leaders Cut framework, make it their own, put their own, uh, their own personality on top of it, and help people. Um, I that was part of part of me starting a business was it took a long time for me to set up all of my routines, etc. Um, but I can help jumpstart them. So that's what growth really looks like for me. I'll continue to grow my my personal coaching business, but also bring on some additional coaches. Fantastic! I love that. Very very exciting times. Um, so I, I'd be remiss uh, to not ask about the ebook that you've published. So the six silver bullets you need to grow your business fast. Why don't you give us just a quick uh, bit on why we should grab a copy and where we can grab a copy? Sure. This is part of the. So remember, my my advice was, hey, create at least thirty minutes for yourself. This is a twenty three minute read. Yes, I timed it, and I'm not a I'm not a speed reader myself. Um, uh, the, the way my brain works is a lot of times I just need a frame and then I can put my own stuff on top of it. And I feel like this really helps, uh, helps business owners start someplace of, Hey, this is how you use the 30 minutes to get yourself organized and it's completely customizable. So, um, and, and part of it stems from, you know, early in my financial services career, I, I was a financial planner. I maintain my financial planning designation because it was so hard to get. Um, and that's why I was, I, I think it shocks people that, you know, sort of silver bullet one, that big mistake people make is you start with the end in mind, which is Covey, but it's also the way we, we create financial plans for families mm -hmm. or used to. Um, what are you going to do with this business? Are you going to pass it on to a family member? Uh, do you want to sell it? Do you want to sell it to the employees? Having those things in mind helps us with the decision-making process for growing it in the first place. Right. So that's number one. Um, and, and the rest flow from that. And strangely enough, I spent all the time talking about how time is a differentiator. I actually put that last. I mean, there's some other things that have to come before that. Um, but you can think of the whole thing as more of a circle, right? Rather than a, here are six things, it's go in a circle. They all have to come together to, to form the core of, of a successful business. Got it. Perfect. And where can we uh, get a copy? Sure. Um, it is available at my website, uh, kenkilday.com. Um, anyone can go there. The ebook is available. There's a banner. Click the link. You'll get it. Um, you can also find me. All my social is there. All the contact is there. My calendar is there. I, I tried to design, or the Mountain Mojo Group, my, my marketing firm, designed a site that, that tackled all the things that I get frustrated with. When I go to a site, I kind of want everything there. Um, just something funny, uh, just a, a silly quirk is when I see uh, like the link that says schedule on any website and I click schedule, but it's not an actual calendar, it's a form, I always yell at the computer. I'm like, that's not a schedule, <laughs> that's a form. <laughs> So everything is, um, everything on my website, you can find me anywhere you want and it's all there. Fantastic. And that's K-E-N-K-I-L-D-A-Y.com, correct? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Excellent. So for those of you listening, head on over to KenKilday.com and get a copy of the six silver bullets you need to grow your business fast and uh, put it on your schedule for tomorrow morning. 8.30, you know, 7.30, 5.30, whenever it is that you, you, you kick off your day, kick it off right with, uh, with Ken's ebook and, and, and I promise you won't regret it. Ken, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate it. 
My and, pleasure, uh, Scott. Thank you excellent. for the invitation. And, yeah, I loved having you on. It was a, a fantastic conversation. For those of you who are listening, your time and attention mean the absolute world to us. It's such an honor that you spent your time here with us today. I hope you got as much out of the conversation as I did, and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care. <laughs>